What's up YouTube? I've got another full Brutalist poster design walkthrough for you today and I'm going to show you every little tip and trick I use to go from start to finish so let's not waste any time and we're going to jump straight in. Here we have my final order poster in this Brutalist style. Now you can see we've got this Brutalist architecture imagery going on with this really heavy grain and grunge effects with a gradient map to top it all off. Now I've even got some custom typography up here and if you zoom in you can see this really nice kind of papery texture. So this all ties in really well together so let's jump into new canvas and walk through it. So if I'm new, now we're going to do 3840 by 4800 pixels and 300 resolution. Now this is the standard in all of my poster work. Now the first step I take in every Bruce List piece is to create a grid. Now this is key because it's very structured and organized. So I'm going to come up to View, Guides, New Guide Layout. Now the settings I'm going to use for this one are just here. We've got five columns, seven rows, 50 pixel gutter and margins. I like in Bruce List work to have the margins and the gutters the same size. It kind of helps a lot with organizing. So now with this, let me just zoom out. And the first thing I'm going to do is add in my type here. So I'm going to type in order. Now I'm using the typeface fit, which I believe is from Adobe fonts. It's called fit regular just here. And I'm going to come over to my text properties and make sure this is all right. Yep. So stick it on metrics and have the tracking set to zero. Now this is going to make sure that all of the gaps throughout are even within this typeface. And I'm going to get my grid lines up and we're just going to shape them up here. So my plan for this is to fit these within the, the uh, first three columns, as you can see here, which is already perfect. And I'm going to make sure that these are aligned with the grid lines, not the transform lines. So that's looking quite good for now. To create this kind of custom type effect, you can see on this original, it's stretching the whole way down. This typeface is amazing to use that. So we can do convert to shape as the function. So I'm going to duplicate our text layer, hide the original, convert this one to a shape. So down here, convert to shape. Now, if you press A on your keyboard, you're going to get your direct selection tool. And now what you're going to see is all of the anchor points on the type. So I want to highlight the ones I'm going to drag down. So I'm going to highlight everything on the bottom half and leave this top half where it is. I'm going to open up my grid lines and I'm going to drag this down to this fourth row. And now immediately on this, it's still somewhat readable, a bit more of a challenge, but we can make this better. Now you could keep it as it is, but it just looks like really long extended narrow lines and that's not really what we're going for. We want it to still be centered. So for example, with this R, I'm going to make sure that this is selected and then I'm going to press A and I'm going to click and drag and you're going to see the anchor points that get highlighted here. They're all going to be highlighted blue. So now I'm going to drag this up, just holding shift, kind of get this centered around the middle line here. And now as I take the, the uh, margins off, it's shaped a bit more like an R. Now because it's so narrow, it's going to be quite difficult anyway, but because I have two R's here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo this. I'm going to make sure this is selected, use A and drag and highlight the anchor points and then come over to this R, hold shift, drag and highlight the same points and then I can drag them up at the same time. So let me open my grid lines up again, drag them both up. Now these are gonna be aligned, which is great. So that's already one letter or two letters out of the way. So now we're gonna move on to the E here. Obviously this E has a really kind of extended stem at the top. So what I want to do is get this kind of center point up into the actual middle. So once again, click and drag these points and I'm gonna make sure that these two are highlighted here as well. I'm gonna drag these up until they are center aligned. Let's get those grid lines back up again. So we'll say about here is good. I'm gonna try and align this with this line here. So let me just get a margin out. Hold shift, drag them down. There we go, that's looking better. So now we have two roots with the E. We can either keep this kind of solid gap here and repeat the same thing on the top. But I think because this is quite a dense typeface, we're gonna actually just extend this stem at the bottom. So to do this, if I have this type selected and I press A, you're gonna notice we only have two anchor points. It's gonna be difficult to do that. So I'm gonna need to add some more in. So I'm gonna press P, add in another point, and I'm gonna make sure that I add in two. So now, the first one, to actually organize this, we're gonna set up some margins. So I'm gonna drag in a vertical ruler and line it up with the side of this E here. And I'm gonna drag in another ruler and this kind of gap that I'm referencing here, we want to repeat the same on this side. And now these anchor points, we can arrange. So I'm gonna drag that one up to the top corner, get my pen tool out, make sure that these are both completely straight anchor points and not bending. Now I can drag this one up like so, and now we just have to organize this and remove the curve from it. So hold option, drag it in, and there we go. Just gonna make sure that this is on the margin line. There we go, that's good for the time being. You wanna make yours perfect, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna leave it there how it is. So now this is much better. You can see the E is a lot more centered. It's a little bit more readable for how narrow it is. Okay, so now with this typeface done, we can work on the main image. I'm just gonna paste this image in. Now I sourced this from Unsplash and I'll link it in the description if you wanna use it yourself, but it's just some brutalist architecture. And I'm gonna drag this underneath the order text. And my main idea with this is have this large piece of architecture laid on top of the text. So to do that, select the image come up to select and subject. Now I'm gonna hit mask, I'm gonna create a duplicate of this, drag it above and then remove the mask on the bottom layer. There we go, now we've got our text formatted behind. Now let's add in this image up here in the top right corner. So I think this kind of image placement works really well in these kind of strict grid layouts because it really enhances it. 
So if I was to drag this up into the corner here, you know, because this gutter size and the margin size is the same, you can see it's like a really strict outline and it looks really good. So I'm gonna drag this underneath the main mask. And now there we go, we're gonna have this emplacement. Now I'm not gonna worry about the lighting and effects for the time being because we're gonna add in a gradient map and we can blend it from there. So now it's about adding in our third image, this uh, kind of stadium looking image at the bottom, just another bit of brutalist architecture. So I'm gonna paste this one in. Now immediately you're gonna notice that there is a sky here. So what I'm gonna do is do select and sky. Now hopefully this is gonna highlight it quite well. You're gonna see it's kind of missing some certain areas. So I'm gonna actually undo that and try select and subject. Now sometimes I bounce between these because one can work better than the other. You can see here that subject has worked better. I'm gonna just make sure I've got everything selected here. So I'm gonna fill that all in. Now just for this little area here, I'm just gonna use the polygon lasso tool, hold down option to remove these kind of uh, sky and cloud areas out of the mask. Now again, I'm not gonna do this too perfectly just for the sake of video, but in your own work, you wanna take your time, make sure this is all accurate. And just make sure there's no blatant pieces sticking out. For example, here it's not a straight line, so we're gonna just blend that in as well. There we go, now I can hit mask. And I'm gonna drag this down. Actually, no, you can see here now, this whole left-hand side is removed. So I'm going to bring my my uh, rectangle tool, get that up, command backspace with white so that we can fill this back in again. I'll get my brush and just go over that again. There we go. So now I'm just gonna drag this down to the kind of placement I want. Because this uh, kind of horizon line here on the snow, we're gonna want it to be above it so that we've got no kind of weird color sticking out. So say about here is good. It may be a little bit high, but we can adjust this once we've got our gradient map in again. So now to actually kind of structure these all together and get the gradient map working, we're gonna add that in. So above the images, I'm gonna come down to adjustments and gradient map. I'm gonna make sure that this icon is selected. Now the reason for this is that if you don't have it selected and you're on the mask, if you come to use the eyedropper tool when you're selecting colors, it's only gonna select black or white, which is not what you want. So I'm gonna double click on this and then the slider bar, and I'm gonna just select a gradient here. Now you can see this is similar to what we're going for, except the colors are not right. So I'm gonna adjust these now. I'm gonna set this to not a solid black, but just slightly in to about there. Now I'm gonna repeat the same thing on the white scale. I'm gonna to go to solid white and then just kind of go diagonally in slightly. Now the reason I do this is because it creates a really nice kind of like off white and dark gray blend, which makes it look a little bit more manual and uh, analog. So now let me just adjust this blue color to kind of a light blue. Let's move into more of the kind of pale blue hues, make it really light. And now we can play around with sliders to get this contrast in. I'm gonna make this a little bit less of a baby blue and more into the uh, darker kind of darker colors. I'm gonna really play around with this and see if I can get this just about right. I think about here is good for the time being. Now hit okay here. And what I'm immediately gonna do is I'm gonna change this layer mode of this image. I'm gonna put it onto difference so that we kind of have an inverse. There we go. Now that's gonna add in some good contrast in the layout. Now, as well as this, you can see on this image, this is really bright, too much blue, too much white going on here. So to fix this one, I'm gonna duplicate our gradient map and I'm gonna use command option G to create a clipping mask just on this image. Now this is where I'm just gonna adjust this just to fix the contrast. So there we go, as I drag that blue up, you see we get so much more detail coming through in the dark colors, get the white a little bit further out, drag the black in a bit more. There we go, that's much more like it in terms of contrast, so I'm liking that a bit more. Just play around with this, get it to how you want it, and then hit okay there. There we go, now we've got this color kind of working really well. We can move on to the kind of like text and assets and shapes. Quick announcement. If you follow me for a while, you know that I completed my 365 day poster challenge, which actually ended up extending to 500 days. Now in this time, I've made so many designs, obviously 500, and I'm happy to announce that they are finally available on my print store now, which is shopdgh.com. So if you wanna support me in any way or you like any of my work, go over there, check them out, see if you like anything, and maybe even buy a print if you're up for it. But back to the video. So you can see on this original, you can see the kind of typography I've added in here. Now it's really small, subtle, sans serif, really good for this kind of like, you know, uh, body and tertiary text. Now I've used ChatGPT to create some abstract text to apply to these kind of images and this brutalist architecture. So let's start with these two down here. Now, the reason I've added some really small text here and um, because of these really tall, narrow lines, you're kind of following a grid line, your eyes kind of following it downwards vertically. So for adding some of this small text here, would just really top it off and kind of work well with the grid. So I'm just gonna paste in these paragraphs over to the new document. Now, this is obviously just simple formatting. You just wanna create some text boxes, add them in, adjust the leading, and just place them how you want them. Now you're gonna notice that these have this kind of odd blue outline because of the gradient map. So I'm gonna drag them above it and make sure that they are aligned with the side of this letter. Now, once again, if you come over to your text properties panel, you just wanna make sure that this is set to all caps and then set the spacing to optical, and there we go. Now, just repeating the same step with this kind of uh, supporting type up here. Once again, I'm just trying to fit it into the grid lines. So what I'm gonna do is line this up with the side of the grid line here. Now, I've repeated the same steps. I've just pasted in the text, make sure that this is set to all caps, kind to optical. So I've made this paragraph just slightly smaller just for a bit of contrast. 
This also is leaving me some space to add in some assets here. So now back on the original, for these kind of shape assets I've got going on here, this is all sourced from just a free vector pack I found online. Now they just provide these kind of uh, abstract kind of like code looking vectors in these interesting shapes, a little bit of like sci-fi elements. So I'm just gonna paste in the circles I've used here. I've simply just brought them in, made them all the same size and placed them next to each other. Now you're gonna see that their default color here is this blue color we've got going on. So my thinking behind this was I kind of just wanted to align them to the grid, make them kind of like structural elements within this grid pattern. Now I'll say these two are the primary. They almost look like uh, graphs. Fits really well in with this brutalist theme and architectural elements. I thought it kind of fit the style perfectly. So once again, I'm just gonna paste these in, repeat the same step. It was simply just drag them in from an EPS file, which is a uh, Illustrator file as a vector form, and then drag them in, resize them, just place them next to each other. And what I'm working on here is I wanted to make sure that this height of this paragraph matched the height of the vectors. So I'm just gonna resize them, make sure they're aligned with this grid on the right hand side, and then just paste in our last vector element here. Now, once all of these shapes are added, I wanted to make sure that they're all grouped so that we can apply effects in the same way. So I'm gonna highlight all of these, use Command G, and I have one last one to add, which is this kind of sci-fi circle element, which I wanted to use to kind of point out the sharp edges of one of these kind of rods that are sticking out of this architecture. So I'm just gonna size this over this point. Once again, add this into the group. I'm also gonna group our typefaces here, Command G. So now I'm gonna enable this type. I'm gonna label this shapes. Now the reason I'm doing this is because we're gonna apply these drop shadow effects, which uh, are seen in this original here. Kind of gives it a little bit of depth, almost looks a bit like an ink bleed, especially on this graph. So now the first thing I'll do is the shapes. So I'm gonna come down to effects and add a color overlay. I'm gonna set this to uh, not solid black, remember, just slightly in. I'm actually gonna eye drop our image just to get the same value. Now I'm gonna come down onto drop shadow, enable this, make sure that the color is set to the same color as the text, just this kind of off black here. Now you're gonna see that we've got all of these values on zero and we've got the size on two. Now the reason I do this is so that I can duplicate it and it kind of expands itself and looks really much like an ink bleed effect. So I'm gonna press the plus icon here, come down to size and I'm gonna double it to four. Now you're gonna notice that as you keep repeating this and doubling the size here, you end up with this really thick bleeding effect. So obviously this is quite extensive for these assets and it's kind of a, a little bit too much of a blur. So I'm just gonna remove a few of them off the end here. I think I'm gonna settle with this kind of level just here. Now I'm gonna copy this layer style and I'm gonna paste it onto the type. Now I'm gonna adjust it based on size. This kind of turns up a lot thicker. So what I might do is just remove one more drop shadow or go into it, just turn the opacity down a little bit. There we go, that's working quite well. Now of all of the assets and effects in place, we can move on to the actual textured elements, which is what kind of ties this all together into a really brutalist piece. So the first one I'm gonna add is a noise layer. So I'm gonna come down to adjustments, solid color, type in the hex code 808080, and I'm gonna convert this to a smart, smart object. Now I'm gonna come up to filter and camera raw filter, and you're gonna see on the effects tab down here, you're gonna notice grain at the bottom. Hit this little arrow to re reveal the options. Now I'm gonna turn the grain up to 100, set the size to about 20, and I'm gonna set the roughness to about 40. Now as I zoom in, this is really kind of fine and detailed grain and it looks great, and this is definitely the best way to apply grain rather than using filter and noise. Now with this layer, change your layer mode to overlay, and now as I zoom in and hide and reveal it, you're gonna see this kind of, it's really subtle, but this fine detail is gonna get brought out. Now I can come back into our raw filter and I'm gonna adjust the roughness to maybe about 60. Then you can notice a bit more of a difference. You can play around with the size of this. Sometimes the, uh, sometimes the bigger the size, it works a lot better. I'm gonna duplicate this so it's a little bit more heavy. Now as I hide and reveal both of them, if I group them together, just name this noise, bringing out a lot of fine detail in this image now. Now the next texture layer we're gonna add is Select Text 4. Now this is sourced from Deron Studio and he's got some great textures, so I definitely do recommend them. And it's kind of this photocopy texture with this kind of diagonal fabric looking print. And I'm gonna set this first one to screen. Now, if you're working with a lot of dark colors and dark elements, setting your first texture layer to screen is great because it really works on the dark levels. So now as you're gonna notice, it's very gray at the moment. So we're gonna adjust our levels here to make this a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use Command L with our texture selected. I'm gonna drag in our low end here. Now immediately you're gonna notice how much darker this is gonna get. So as I zoom in, we've still got this detail. So we're keeping the texture, but we're bringing those levels right down. So I'm gonna set that as okay. Now I'm gonna duplicate this and I'm gonna set our second layer mode to exclusion. These two in combination work really well. Screen likes to target the dark ends and exclusion targets the high ends. So you get a good amount of consistency across the whole page. So now I'm just gonna bring the exclusion opacity down to about 50, because this can be a lot heavier. And I'm gonna come back into our levels here and I'm gonna drag our dark ends in slightly. Now you're gonna notice we still have this detail of the texture, except it's not really dark and gray. So now I'm gonna select okay on that and this is looking good already. Now to top this off, I'm just gonna add in some small details over the page here to make it look a little bit more worn. So I'm just gonna paste in this layer. Now this is a photocopy scan layer with these kind of like watered down elements. Now this is from Texture Fabric. You can find this simply on a Google search, the Texture Fabric photocopy. So now I'm gonna drag this over these light pages. 
just size this how I like it. I'm gonna set the layer mode to exclusion. Now immediately you're gonna notice this is very heavy and this is not what we're going for. So I'm gonna turn our opacity right down. Let's get it to maybe to 10. Now even on 10 here, you know, you've got these kind of elements poking through. Can still be a bit heavy though, so we're gonna use Command L again, play with our adjustments. I'm gonna drag this dark end in a bit to just hide it slightly and I'm gonna settle with it just there. So we've still got all of this detail poking through and even as you zoom in on the kind of the edges of the piece, it's not, there's not any clear kind of like poor blend lines there. It works really well. So I'm gonna duplicate this, bring this down to this kind of white area down here and we're looking for the same kind of effect here. Now this has a bit more of a harsher blend, so I'm gonna just press mask get my black brush and just brush over that top edge so that it blends a little bit smoother. And there we go, it's gone now. And there we go, if you're happy with your texture layers, you can obviously add more noise if you like, or you can adjust your levels. Just to top this all off, I'm gonna go on adjustments, and add in a just a general levels layer. From here, this is great for just finalizing your light. So you can drag in these midtones for a bit more contrast, drag in the dark ends for a little bit more of a harsher black. But for me, I'm quite happy with our levels at the moment. I might settle around here. So now we can still got all of this detail coming through in the white areas as well as this kind of really nice diagonal texture on the text. And there we go, that is our final Brutalist design. YouTube, as always, thank you so much for making it to the very end of the video. I hope that you can find it useful or that you learn something to apply to your own design process. Now, YouTube's gonna recommend you another video just here that it thinks you need to see. So go ahead and do that, and I'll see you over there. Peace. <laughs>